Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. One of the reasons I started doing this video series, Nepi's Analysis, is to find potential hidden gems. And I have potentially found one of those companies on the ASX. And that is a company I'm featuring in today's video, Supply Network. And I'm really excited to bring you or to share with you this company today because I don't hear much chatter about this company in any sort of forum out there, not only in podcasts. In fact, I have not heard this company mentioned once in any of the podcasts I listen to. I don't have heard this company mentioned in Osby's The Core at all. Yet, you'd have to consider this company to be a high quality company on the ASX. And the very fact that I did discover that as I started my research in this company absolutely stunned me. So I'm very excited to bring you or share with you this high quality company on the ASX that not many people have heard about. Now, for full disclosure purposes, I am not a shareholder of this company. I have never thought about buying shares in this company, even though the chart looks or has looked phenomenal over the past few years. And I am probably closer to buying shares in this company after doing research on Supply Network because my opinion on this company has changed. I didn't have much of an opinion before I did research. And now my opinion is now questioning why haven't I done any research on these companies in the past? This is a high quality company on the ASX. Now, one of the reasons I hadn't done any research on this company in the past is because I knew what they do. This company owns uh, multi spares, which is a truck and bus part supplier. So they don't manufacture parts. They just buy the parts and sell them off to people who need those parts. And it seems like a simple business model, but this business model has been working over the past 10 years, in fact, 10 plus years. So this is one of the ads they do have, I found, uh, their multi-spares store selling Japanese truck parts. They also sell American truck parts, European truck parts, bus parts, for instance, engine filtrations, injectors, superchargers, cooling electric, clutch drive line, brake wheel end, steering suspension, accessories, diagnostics. They have stores all around Australia, including Mackay, Toowoomba, Brisbane, Newcastle, Sydney, Illawarra, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, everywhere you would expect, including Smeaton Grange. In fact, I did have to look up where Smeaton Grange is. It's sort of near Campbelltown, Camden in Western Sydney. So this company just sells truck and bus parts. Seems like a simple business model. And that's the main reason I didn't I uh, haven't spent any time researching this company in the past, and I wish I had now because as I started the research preparing for this video, I was really surprised at what I found in Supply Network and how they have performed over the past 10 years. Now, onto the quality of Supply Network, and before I started this video, I thought, oh, yeah, look, they, they sell truck and bus parts. Uh, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of growth in this company, not much future, that sort of thing, not much massive amount of growth. Uh, and that sort of biased opinion I had on this company. And I think it's very important to be open minded enough to change your opinion on any thought you do have, because that's how we grow as not only as, as, as investors, but also as human beings. And right now, I would have a hard time arguing against calling Supply Network a high quality company for a few reasons. If we take into account their revenue per share growth over the past 10 years, it's above 10%. Actually, it's just below 10%, but it's accelerating their revenue per share, which is a really good sign. Return investor capital and return equity are really high for this type of company. I was really surprised to see that. And it's been consistently high over the past 10 years. So I do prefer return on invested capital than return on equity. Right now, return on equity is something like 38, which seems ridiculously high, but return on invested capital has been routinely above 20. And when it's not above 20, it's above 15. That's over a 10 year period, which tells me this is a high quality company. And so we have the growth. We have the quality in the earnings, return on invested capital, return on equity. We have the share price in a uptrend, continual uptrend. We have increasing dividends. Everything you need to call this a high quality company is there. The only thing is, I'm not sure about the management, but it seems like the management is staying out of the limelight. I don't know much about the CEO. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. This is the sort of company where maybe the management needs to stay out of the limelight. Uh, they just let the company and those who are running the company, the real runners of the company, do their thing because whatever they're doing is working at this point in time. 
Now let's have a look at some financials of supply network. Uh, revenue of one, this is financial year 22 numbers. Now, they're half year numbers, even better than this. So this company is continuing to grow. We'll look at the revenue per share growth in the next slide. And everything is looking up for this company. So revenue, 198.5 million in financial year 22. Profit, 19.5. Operating cash flow, 13.8. Free cash flow, 10.8. Everything's increasing through time. Gross profit margin, 42%. It's not too high. It's not like La Visa, which is like 80, 90%. And it's not too low either. That's pretty, pretty nice gross profit margin. And the most important thing is gross profit margin has been flat over the past 10 years. So it's not increasing, it's not decreasing. And that's a really good thing. And that would be even better if their gross profit margins maintains around 42% during these inflationary periods, because that will be telling us they have pricing power. And I've already mentioned their return on invested capital is 24 right now, consistently above 20 over the past 10 years. And when it's not above 20, it's just below 20. And return on equity in the past year was 38, which does seem a little bit high for a company like this. But that, and, and return on equity hasn't been that high in the past. So this is the highest it's been for a while, but that is still a pretty good return on equity. The sort of return on equity you are looking for in any sort of company you want to invest in for the long term. One way you can determine whether a company is high quality or not, uh, it's not the only reason, but if you only had one thing to look at in determining whether a company is high quality or low quality is just look at the revenue per share growth over the last 10 years. And you'll notice some mining companies will have some good periods of revenue growth and some down periods of revenue growth because those mining companies are cyclical. Those are not high quality companies. In my opinion, every single mining company in the world is not high quality because they are sickly cool. Now, if we have a look at supply networks, revenue growth, we see it growing through time. In fact, every single year, revenue has been higher than the previous year. In fact, revenue has grown from 61 million in 2012 to 198 million in the most recent year. So it's tripled in 10 years or just over 10 years. But more importantly is looking at revenue per share growth because some companies will raise capital for acquisitions and stuff like that. So you can get a bit of a distorted view of their revenue growth. So I prefer to look at revenue per share growth. And for supply network over the last 10 years, that is 9.1% per year. And that revenue per share growth has been accelerating because in the last five years, it's 14.5%. The last three years, 16.9%. You just see the graph that revenue has been accelerating in the last five years. The other thing I've included here is operating margins. And that's another exciting thing about supply network right now. The operating margins have been increasing over the last five years as well. Between 2012 and 2019, operating margins were roughly between 9 and 11%. There was one year there, they were 8.2%. But the last three years, we've seen operating margins increase to 11.2%, 13%, in the most recent year, 15.1%. Now, the one question you might have is whether these operating margins can be sustained at these levels. There's a possibility they will drop. And that means even if they continue to grow their revenue, you might see a bit of a dip in their profit. So that's one little thing to be wary about supply network is if they can maintain these operating margins moving forward. Another way you can tell me if a company is high quality or not is just by looking at a dividend uh, growth. And ideally you'll want a company to be growing the dividends uh, every single year, maybe not every single year, but over time, you want to see dividends growing through time. If you have a look at Telstra, look at the banks, the dividends for those companies are either flat or going nowhere fast. And yes, I would not consider the banks, apart from maybe CBA, would not consider Telstra to be high quality companies on the ASX. I don't care about the dividend yield. That does not determine whether a company is low quality or high quality. It's all about the growth in the company. So have a look at the dividend growth, have a look at the revenue per share growth, have a look at the EPS growth, earnings per share growth. And if a company is growing their revenue, growing the earnings per share, more than likely they should be growing their dividends over time. And that is true for Supply Network. There was one year back in 2015, looks like they had a special dividend. Back in, back in 2013, they had a dividend that year of about, say, six or seven cents. And now it's up to 20 cents with a dividend yield of 2.6%. I don't really care about the dividend yield for these type of companies because they are growing 
And right now, dividend yield might be 2.6%. But if you buy in right now at 2.6% dividend yield, and they keep on increasing the dividend yield, in five or 10 years, the dividend yield on your invested capital that you usually put into the company will be significantly higher than 2.6%. That's the whole point in buying into these growing companies because eventually the dividend you receive from your investment will be staggeringly high, much higher than if you invested in Telstra or the banks. Now, I might have mentioned earlier that this company seems to be largely ignored by the market, but when you look at some of the valuation metrics, you probably wouldn't be able to argue that because there is a little bit of a premium to supply network right now. So there are portions of the market who do know about this company and they're willing to pay uh, to take a position in supply network right now because the P ratio is 25.6, which is not too high and not too low. Now, that does suggest that the market is expecting further growth in this company. So they're expecting this momentum to keep on going. And if there's any trouble that this company faces, the share price will take a massive hit because that P ratio at 25.6 is a little bit high for a non-growth company. That's if the company hits some problems and they don't they stop growing. Uh, price to sales ratio 2.5, which is on the high side for a company like this, but that's, but that's okay. Uh, price operating cash flow 36.2, which is a little bit higher than I would like, but again, the market is willing to pay a little bit of premium for this company right now because they expect supply network to continue growing in the future. Also did a reverse TCF. What's the growth expectations for this company to justify the current valuation uh, on their earnings per share? So this company will have to grow their earnings per share over the next 10 years at 13.2% to justify the current valuation. So that's sort of like the market expectations moving forward for this company. I definitely think Supply Network can hit though that sort of growth over the next 10 years. I definitely think it's plausible. But of course, if you want a margin of safety, you might wait for the share price to pull back a significant amount. So it's all about your margin of safety and whether you're conservative or not. Now, another way you can determine the perception of a company, uh, the market perception of the company, is just look at the P-E ratio history or any sort of valuation metric history of a company. So this is the P-E ratio of supply network going to the start or going back to the start of 2013. Between 2013 and 16, the P-E ratio for this company was between about 10 and 15. So the market wasn't that willing to pay a premium for this company. So I think the market back then thought supply network was on the lower quality side and probably would have agreed with them back then. But you can see from about 2016, 2017 through to now, the P-E ratio for this company has gradually climbed. And since the COVID-19 financial panic, the P-E ratio of supply network has been consistently above 20. Only two times has it fallen below 20. The first time was at the start of 2021. Second time was in June last year when there's overall weakness in the market. And at times, the P-E ratio has been above 30. But now the market says, I'm willing to pay between 20 and 30 P-E ratio for this company. And right now, the P-E ratio is sort of in between the two, depending on what site you look at. So in this is from Guru Focus, and Guru Focus says the P ratio of supply network is 22.3, which is on the lower side of what you would expect over the past three years. So this is just telling us the market is more and more willing to pay a premium of supply network because it has changed its perception of this company from a low quality company back in 2013 to a high quality company in 2023. And I probably should also mention that when you see P ratio climbing like that, that's called multiple expansion. And the way you get the share price of a company to increase is through financial expansion and or multiple expansion. And the two things have been happening to Supply Network over the past six or seven years, definitely since 2017. And this is the weekly chart for Supply Network going back to 2013. So a 10-year chart for the company. Now, back in 2013, the share price of this company was $1. Now it's $12.51. This has been a 12 bagger for those shareholders who have held on to this company for the last 10 years. But you'll notice between 2013 and 16, 17, remember that was a period when the market was only willing to pay uh, a PE ratio of between 10 and 15 for this company. And during 2015 through to 2017, the share price just went sideways. You can see there was no trend in the share price at all, a nice consolidation period. And then the share price started to break out in 2017. And the share price then was $2. And the share price has been a six-bagger 
since then. And remember, that was a time when the market started, was more willing to pay a premium for this company. That's when we started to see P ratio starting to climb. So there was multiple expansion happening at that point in time. We also saw financial expansion. So that's the way you can see a share price rising through time is through multiple expansion and also financial expansion. And that's been happening to supply network since 2017. And the share price of this company has been in an uptrend ever since then. In fact, there has been periods of time where the share price has pulled back, for instance, during the COVID-19 financial panic, Although to be fair, the supply network, share price didn't pull back all that much. And we have seen slight pullbacks over the past two or three years. We saw one in 2022 uh, into June where share price went from $11.50 down to about $8.50. But the share price keeps on rebounding and keeps on climbing because this company keeps hitting their financial uh, results out of the park. They keep on increasing their financial numbers. And that's why the share price is in an uptrend, has not come out of that uptrend at all. And if you want to pay for supply network, if you want to buy some shares, you do have to pay a little bit of a premium because the market thinks this company will keep on growing from here. Now, the one negative thing you could maybe argue in regards to supply network is at times it does seem like the shares in this company are illiquidly traded and that can be a turn off to some investors it's not a turn off to me uh, but particularly if it is a high quality company because you want to own high quality companies for as long as possible and in fact uh, an illiquidly traded company can be beneficial for those patient shareholders but for instance if you are a fund manager trying to get a significant position in supply network you might need a little bit of patience because otherwise you might significantly drive up the share price because there won't be enough shares being supplied to the market for you to take a significant position in a short period of time. So you have to be patient to get your position over a period of time. And you can just see that the shares in this company are illiquidly traded just by looking at the daily chart here. So sometimes the share price of this company can drop or rise 5 10% in you know, 100 shares traded because there's not a lot of supply, not a lot of demand. Um, that's not a bad thing in my opinion, but there are some investors, some fund managers who are turned off by that. Now, generally through time, a company like Supply Network, if it keeps on growing, those liquidity issues will overcome. And a perfect example of that is Altin. Have a look at Altin back in 2012, in ProMedicus 2012-13. You'll see shares in those companies were illiquidly traded and now they're not. The next five companies I plan in doing in this particular series are Iris, uh, Santos, Sonic Healthcare, which I'm very seriously thinking about taking a position in right now, Advanced Breaking Technology, ABT. Very excited to share you, with you that company because I have done no research on ABT. I do know what they do because it's in their name, Advanced Breaking Technology. It's a small cap, micro cap on the ASX, but this company is profitable and they're also growing, and they might have hit an inflection point. And the next video I will do is on mineral resources. I've already prepared that video for that company, and I'm very excited to bring you uh, a video on mineral resources because it is an almost cult stock on the ASX. Uh, unlike a Supply Network, where I hear no chatter about that company, I hear a lot of chatter about mineral resources. Every single time I listen to a podcast, Mineral, or it seems like mineral resources is brought up. If you have any suggestions of any company you'd like me to uh, focus on in one of these NEPI's analysis videos, I uh, leave your suggestion in the comment section of this video and I'll see what I'm able to do. I can't guarantee you, can't, can't guarantee or promise anything, but I'll just see what I'm able to do. That's all I have for this NEPI's analysis on supply network. If you do have any thoughts, any questions, anything to say about supply network if you have been a long-term shareholder of this company i'd love to hear your opinion on this company so leave any thoughts any questions in the comment section of this video otherwise i am not a financial advisor if you do need financial advice make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs that's it for this video have a good day